45 men have served as United States President and 49 as Vice President. 15 men have served in both positions. In each case, they served as Vice President first, and in 9 out of 15 cases, they ascended to the office upon the death or resignation of the President. However, there were six who got to the presidency through being elected. Four were sitting vice president at the time of their election, and only two were former vice presidents. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Martin Van Buren were each elected to the presidency while serving as vice president. After Van Buren, a sitting vice president wouldn't accomplish this for another 150 years. Van Buren was elected in 1836. Ronald Reagan's vice president, George Bush, was elected president in 1988. In the time between Van Buren and Bush, there were many failed attempts. John C. Breckinridge was the sitting vice president of James Buchanan when he ran against Abraham Lincoln in 1860. Eighty years later, John Nance Gardner, Franklin D. Roosevelt's vice president, actually competed with Roosevelt for his party's nomination, though he wouldn't actually get to run in the general election. Others include Lyndon B. Johnson's vice president, Hubert Humphrey, Bill Clinton's, Al Gore, and Dwight Eisenhower's, Richard Nixon. Nixon lost the election of 1960 to John F. Kennedy. However, he'd later win the election of 1968. He's one of only two former vice presidents to be elected. The only other was Joe Biden, elected in 2020. Only four years prior, Biden had finished his eight years as vice president under Barack Obama. Jimmy Carter's vice president, Walter Mondale, made this same attempt decades prior. After Carter was defeated by Ronald Reagan in 1980, Mondale ran against Reagan in 1984 but performed even worse than Carter had four years earlier. Historically, the most common path from the vice presidency to the presidency has been through the president's death. This has happened eight times. The first was when ninth president William Henry Harrison died in 1841. It was the first time a president ever died in office, and the process of presidential succession wasn't actually clear. Some believed that the vice president should serve as acting president, but only long enough for another election to be held. If this turned out to be the case, men like Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Harry S. Truman possibly would never have served as anything more than acting president for a few months, and the list of men who served as both vice president and president would be much shorter. It all came down to Harrison's vice president, John Tyler, being insistent that he would get to serve a term of his own. For more information on this topic, watch the video, How John Tyler Single-Handedly Defined the Vice Presidency, link in the upper right-hand corner of this video. John Tyler set a precedent that would be followed seven more times, due to three deaths from natural causes and four from assassinations. In many cases, the vice president who ascended to the presidency would only serve that partial term. However, Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, Harry S. Truman, and Lyndon B. Johnson were each able to later win a full term of their own. Gerald Ford was the only vice president who ascended to the higher office upon the president's resignation. Currently, there are five people living who served as vice president but never as president. Dan Quayle, Al Gore, Dick Cheney, Mike Pence, and incumbent Kamala Harris. Each could still run for president, though in the case of Quayle, Gore, and Cheney, it seems highly unlikely, especially due to their ages. Though each is close in age to Donald Trump and Joe Biden, the expected candidates in 2024, it would be odd for any to suddenly re-emerge on the political scene considering their lack of attempts in recent presidential elections. Kamala Harris did run in the 2020 Democratic presidential primaries and is only 58, and some speculate that Mike Pence might make a presidential run in 2024.
Unless the sitting president dies, it's actually very rare for vice presidents or former vice presidents to ascend to the higher office. Most vice presidents have been considered historically insignificant, at least in their role as vice president. Names such as George M. Dallas, Hannibal Hamlin, and James S. Sherman are less likely to be recognized by a random American today than even the names of the most obscure presidents, such as Millard Fillmore or Benjamin Harrison. This is ironic, considering John Adams had originally thought that serving as vice president was the best route to the presidency. In fact, it was possibly only this belief that kept Adams from resigning. For more information on this topic, watch the video, why John Adams hated being vice president. To support this channel, consider subscribing and donating to Resyndicated on Patreon. Patreon link in the description below.